Are you a Collingwood supporter? So you, no, no, Dawson is uh, oh, one-eyed, mad. 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 You don't want to go there. He gets upset. <laughs> Can't even spell it on his car. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we, we got, you know how they're having an inquiry at the moment about racism? Yeah. Um, yeah. One, one, we've got a guy who's a member here who's a professor of racism and he's been hired by Collingwood. <laughs> really? oh, right. <laughs> so we don't have black uh, and white stripes now, we only have white stripes. White stripes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Well, look, um, you're actually, uh, let me think, number three podcast for me. So wow. I've, I'm just learning this uh, process, getting it getting it going. So it's mm -hmm. great to have you here. So thanks for coming, Charlie, Ben and Dawson. Uh, from yeah. would never guess it though, but I think you must be from Zenergy because I can see something on your shirt there. Yeah. Maybe you just got one free at a show <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Picked up one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm the odd man out. I... I didn't dress appropriately. Well, we yeah. didn't give you one. Yeah, I've got, I've got my I couldn't Australian, find a moose size. My Australian... Um, See if you Department can. of <laughs> Safari. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to get like that. <laughs> That's really good. Everyone thinks like it's an official government T-shirt. <laughs> yeah, you could probably get That's into really a good. government building with it on. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah so um, look, you came in three cars, I noticed. We wanted to waste uh, more carbon. Yeah, good, good. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the plan. Yeah, no, he's got something to do afterwards. He's got something I'm to do. And I'm door. going home to drink. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so did Ben draw the short straw? He didn't get the beamer? beamer. Uh, that's right. No, I like trying to go up hills and yeah, round corners. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ben's our sales manager. He's got to earn it. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. Um, <laughs> Glenn kicked me out of the uh, electric vehicle charging station when I got here. He... Apparently, I soiled it by uh, having an in internal combustion engine in there, and he got all stroppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a thing. It's called being iced. Iced, yes. <laughs> internal <laughs> combustion engine, engine. iced. Yeah. I, so yeah. if if an ice parks in an EV charging spot, you've been iced. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if your listeners know exactly where you're located, <laughs> but let me tell you, it is in the middle of nowhere, nowhere. <laughs> and just over there over, uh, is nowhere. <laughs> It's to the left of nowhere. To, it's on the top of a nowhere mountain in the <laughs> middle of nowhere. Yeah. And you've got to come up this long, winding dirt road to get yeah. here. <laughs> but Ben spotted something on Google Maps. I did. An EV charging station. Mm. Advertised. Oh, is it? Well, I don't it know is. who did that. It wasn't me, <laughs> honestly. So one of the co-op members must have been so excited. I could just imagine trying to find it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, still, it's still secret squirrel business. Well, you actually come up the road here, and on the uh, GPS, it, um, it says... Turn right, turn right, turn right. You, you know, you're not on the road. Um, it's not telling you you're not on the road, but it's saying, please turn, you know, go back and turn immediately right. And I'm going, if I went back and turned immediately right, I'm going straight over a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've, you've got your set on European roads, so it's the wrong side. Mine right. said turn left coming up here, whereas it showed turn right. Yeah. Go figure. The voice on mine sucks. I just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just telling Charlie before you came, I asked about when we bought the car what the service cost was because we've got a Kona EV yeah. and they said oh, it's 165 a year. And I said, what do we get for that? And they go, we um, upgrade the GPS uh, and uh, we check the tyre depth. Yeah. There's just nothing to do. <laughs> Maybe they vacuum the floor. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, for that, you upgrade the GPS, you're doing well. Right for, for that amount of money because yeah. I took my BMW in a few years ago and asked them to upgrade the uh, uh, the GPS and they wanted a thousand dollars for it. Okay. Whew. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That, that's why I haven't upgraded mine. I, I suggested that Google Maps was probably that's a, what I did. A better way to go. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> oh God. Um, yeah. Sorry. Just uh, checking that all the cameras are rolling nicely so I can see them on here. Yep. That's all good. Um, Cool. All right. So um, we got through the name bit, though there's one person here who has, goes by many names. Me? That would be Chuck Chiller, Chaz, Chuckster, Chuck Rooney, uh, Hey You. Uh, Dawson uses Knucklehead a fair, fair few times. Um, and some other ones uh, which we uh, won't discuss at the moment. <laughs> Dawson actually has a couple of names within our company. But one, one might be called Pudding Head. And it's not from what you might think because... Um, his, his head's not particularly shaped like a pudding, but uh, it's more from their other audio company, and he has an inability to hear um, virtual surround sound, which is surround sound through two channels. And so, David, my co-designer, we both decided he's got 
a pudding head and he couldn't hear, hear it. So that's one of the names. Tony's got a di- Tony's got a different name for you, which I won't discuss. <laughs> Look, uh, the, 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 there is absolutely nothing to be said for my business partners. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Period. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm curious about this uh, this virtual surround sound. Is that like quadraphonics? You know, four yeah, speakers? it's in that area. Oh, okay. um, uh, we, uh, we 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 have a separate company, uh, Dawson and myself, which is a specialist in um, surround sound from uh, two channel speakers, uh, two channel sources, uh, and also from uh, uh, we recreate that sound in the room very differently to, to others. But we also have worked on uh, headphone surround sound where you perceive sound all around your head uh, from two, um, just two channels. There's two drivers. Yeah, it's easy to get rear, it's easy to get on top, it's easy to get sides. The hardest is to get in front of you, believe it or not. And, that's wow. a, and nobody does it. And everybody pretends that they do, but in fact they don't. Um, so the challenge is sound in front, in front of you. Um, but um, strangely, that sort of led to, uh, in a twisted path, it led to, uh, that, that company's called Involve Audio, but it, it, um, Involve Audio, uh, as a matter of you know, survival and keeping going, designs for other people, come, they, people come and visit us, and uh, can we do this, can we do that? And we have a, a pretty hot design team on there, which cover a whole bunch of spectrums of, you name it, um, physicists and mechanical engineers and electronic engineers and blah, blah, blah. And uh, so one day somebody, uh, one of my ex-customers approached me um, about uh, improvements to battery technology and solar. What, what can you do? And we basically said, well, think about it. And uh, that led to Zenergy. Oh my gosh, I was often yeah. wondering how you went the jump from audio, sort of, I refer to it as bespoke audio, like, you know. It's, it's yeah, <laughs> yeah, we, we hope we're not too bespoke. Uh, we're trying to not be bespoke. You're trying to become <laughs> trying, the, the world standard. Yeah, the world standard. Okay. But, um, uh, yeah, it really was a case of, uh, we design in a whole bunch of areas, and uh, and so it keeps the, the cash going, and uh, uh, so... Uh, somebody in our company, I think it may have been me, came up with an idea um, to have the solar panels and the batteries and the inverters all integrated as one assembly and uh, almost become Lego. And the big challenge in that uh, was uh, temperature. Mm. And that led us to a huge battery search around the world to cope with temperature. And that's the, the very beginnings of Zenergy. And so we, we morphed not into... Uh, um, a totally separate. We, we're separate companies, but we share R and D staff as such, um, and that's a good way of functioning because when one industry is up, the other one's down, and so it helps create some stability. So you went searching for a battery that could cope mm. with high temperature. Temperature was the big problem uh, because, uh, as you know, um, uh, solar cells on top of a roof can get five degrees hotter than the external ambient, and uh, quite easily. And so in, in Australia, we have ambience of, I remember one day, uh, it was 48 degrees officially. I remember my, my daughter was in an ice rink that day, and it was 50 degrees where we were. And so uh, she didn't notice <laughs> in an ice rink. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, so 55 degrees was, was a, a target, and uh, there was just nothing to go near it. Um, as people may say, their batteries are good to 40, 50 degrees, but that's usually with uh, restrictions and uh, air conditioning. And uh, we were trying to find something that um, could withstand that, and we did find it. Uh, our, one of our top engineers, Chris, from our company, is a mechanical engineer, a very diverse fellow, and uh, he found it. And uh, and uh, Dawson and myself, we looked at it and we go, ooh, <laughs> this, this is interesting. In- this is interesting. Uh, pity, pity it costs so much. Uh, pity, pity it's so bloody heavy. Yeah. And uh, Well, at the time, we didn't know it cost yeah. so much. So we started looking at all of the attributes of this these, this battery, which is, in fact, one of these, this, uh, okay. um, yeah. a, a lithium titanate battery. Um, so we started looking at titanate batteries and kept going, geez, that's good, that's good. Can I, Gee, can that's, I, can I hold it? Yeah, sure. That's, Ooh, what, it's, that's it's heavy. heavy. One of the issues. It's twice um, the weight of lithium iron phosphates and, and those types, but it's half the weight um, of uh, lead acid. So the obvious question was, well, why, why isn't everybody using these outside of the weight? Yeah. 
Um, and the answer was, ooh, they're 10 times more expensive. Really? 10 yeah. times? Yeah. The initial batteries Whoa. were yeah. 10 times the mm. price. Mm. Wow. Now, so we thought, well, you know, what's happened with price over the last few years? Have the Chinese, for instance, started manufacturing them? Because the original ones all came from Japan. So we started looking around and we found a couple of companies in China had started manufacturing them and the price was half that, well, in fact, less than half that. Yeah. And then when we started to negotiate, we got it down even further. So we started building products, well, we designed products for one type of battery, which was uh, a, a rectangular flat battery, um, probably about twice the size of your phone. Mm. You mean the Aeon? No, no, it wasn't an Aeon. It was Who a different product. Oh, okay. Is it, um, did it get made, or it was just out? <laughs> you answered to us. We, we were ready to make. We were ready to go to manufacture. So we went yeah. back to the battery manufacturer, who we'd, we'd been dealing with the entire time, yeah. talking to and getting information from. And he looked at us and he said, "Oh, uh, sorry, we've had a form factor change. We're not making those anymore." He was very proud of it too. <laughs> he was very proud of it. And we're looking at him like. You've got two heads. We've just finished I, all of our design efforts. I turned a wonderful shade of green. We've got, we've got all of the moulds made, everything. And we're ready to literally to go. And now you're telling us you can't manufacture, we can't have the batteries. Was it a unique shape? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, no. The batteries were, um, they look like books, um, just a flat package. So prismatic. Prismatic cells, yeah. yeah um, right. Uh, but we, we came up, we created moulds and all sorts of things for different forms of this. We created three different forms of the product. Um, and there were difficulties in those units, uh, which I won't go into here, but uh, to create them. And it was an expensive process, but suddenly we're just left high and dry and we had to start again. And uh, so we continued to search. And uh, uh, somebody, probably Chris again, I'm not too sure who, but one of us uh, found... Um, um, in long, in long, in, uh, but there are m many, many flavours of the uh, Yin Long factory out there. And what, if you go to the, the internet, you'll see mixed reviews of it, of people testing them, and they say, "Well, they're not really that good." Um, well, I'm afraid they've got C standard stock, which is a, a real throw out. Um, the, they're actually manufactured f uh, for buses, and we're talking uh, in China. Um, uh, they're Fantastic buses. I mean, these are beyond any bus you see in Australia. They're really high tech and well made. High uh, class buses. High class buses. Nice buses. And the problem they've got is they're big and they've got lots of hills there and they've got to go up, up and down hills. And so it's a monster kickstart current. And China has got a very diverse temperature. It really has. Um, China sort of has a, you're either incredibly hot or incredibly cold in about three weeks of something tolerable in the middle of it in most zones, I find. Um, but, uh, yeah, they um, – so the the fish that John West rejects is typically what a lot of people have got um, on the internet when they've gone for these Yinlong uh, cells. And so they can be a very mixed quality. Um, and so uh, right now um, – uh, they're standardising on an even higher capacity cell right now. There are less and less rejects because their quality is improving and, and more and more A grades. The problem is the A grades cost a lot of money. And uh, so it does uh, uh, put price pressure on the product. But what you get is the ability for to kickstart a jumbo jet, basically. Uh, I mean, they've, they're, they're capable of surges of 8, eight and 10 C, and it's real. I should have bought the one that Chris played with at the factory. Oh, uh, missing the bit on the end. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah he just got one the wrong way. We went around one day and <laughs> zzzz, massive, <laughs> massive uh, light show in the factory. And, and the, uh, I walk around a bit of you know, a bit shocked and there's Chris laughing. I thought, <laughs> you're happy. <laughs> but but it, it, it blasted, what's that? I think it's an eight millimeter uh, chunk of uh, maybe 10 or uh, so what, what would be the short circuit if I put a metal bar across here? Do you know what that might be? The short circuit current? Yeah. Um, I know what the short circuit current is of um, our battery. Um, I just, it doesn't come to me off the top of my head, but I think it's, it's around 1,000. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard people say 1,600 amps. And I yeah, it's, really? it's about that. Wow, okay. Yeah. 
It's nuts. It's enough to it's enough to uh, make that Fred disappear in, in a fraction of a second. You, so you can spell arc well with this. You can. You literally can. At two two point three volts, and uh, yeah, uh, it's a it's a crazy amount of current. And, uh, cool. But the other aspect of them for the listeners out there who don't really know is that uh, they're very hard to hurt. Um, uh, you can stab them, strangle them, um, burn them, freeze them whack it through a, a drill, and they don't go bang. Um, you can make it destroy, we've found that out. We really have pushed these things to the outside limits, but it, it's unreasonable. Uh, but we You have to be very stupid. Either put it in a fire, yep, that'll make it go bang. I uh, won't go bang, it'll combust, it'll, it'll combust. at 173. Uh, or hit it with so much um, uh, over voltage that, yeah, it'll, it, it will, uh, in fact, uh, go bang. Even a steel bar will do that. If you, if you, if you <laughs> 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 That's right. Details. Details. So, Ben, where do you fit into this, this company? Sales, basically. Right. Um, You've got to sell it without the bang. Once the... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've just we've just poisoned his sales, haven't we? <laughs> well, I think we been, just been saying like, shut up. It's bloody hard to make them go back. So, are you going to tell people don't put them in the fire when you're using them? Uh, most people, I would assume, who install it would know that. Um, <laughs> in saying that, there are special people, <laughs> <laughs> and inside the battery, they have made it uh, significantly safe. A lot of a lot of things to override any issues. Um, so, I, I basically came on board after. Approximately four years of R and D, just set the business up, get it going, get it into the Australian market. Bit of sales, bit of marketing, and pretending I know what I'm doing. And how many years in solar have you been practicing, Ben? I think too much is the answer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over about a dozen. About I a thought dozen it was a bit years. more than a dozen, wasn't it? I don't know. Before yeah. that was in AV. So funnily enough, yeah, well, you've got that's an right. Ben used to be audio well. visual, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we so, couldn't resist it. <laughs> so basically, yeah, just getting getting the product out in the market. So, what do you see in, when you when you're talking sales to end users or to, yep. to or to, to installers or distributors? All of those? Um, we took a, I guess, to market send to dealers and to install companies. Um, we've now just put on R and J batteries, who are a distribution sort of channel. And they'll move it across also into New Zealand. I think it's about 30-odd outlets that they have throughout Australia and New Zealand. Um, but we get probably 60%, 70% of our online inquiries come from end users and then obviously directed to the correct sort of channel to suit. So a lot of uh, answering the right questions from the right people and answering the, how the hell does this work? Yeah, go on. What's different? What, what questions do you get? <laughs> um, how is it different? Is the, It's probably the biggest one. So in, in terms of the product itself, there's only two things that we lose on in terms of uh, against most of the other lithium-ion batteries, and that is physical volume per kilowatt hour and upfront cost, um, all of which are comfortably answered when you break it down into every single person uses a kilowatt hour when they use their power in their home. Um, ours is significantly cheaper than anyone else's. It's one of the only batteries that you can cycle multiple times a day. So we're looking at approximately seven cents per kilowatt hour, which is at least a quarter of most people's household bill. On three cycles a day. On three cycles a day, over 20 years, just the warranted <coughs> period. So so that's, that's one of the real strengths of yeah. lithium titanate is the cycling. Yeah. Yep. So against most of the other market, Competitors, we're probably five, maybe ten times longer lifespan. Right. So wow. it's, it's just the longevity of the battery, how it works, and the the broader range of, okay, climates, uh, temperatures, the whole works compared to all the other batteries on the market. Cool. I've got on the screen there a picture of an installation with uh, cell electronic converters and uh, five of the Aeon batteries. They're a very interesting form factor. How, how did you come up with that? Um, that was uh, one of our mechanical engineers, and he's a physicist also. Specifically, uh, Max, his son. Yeah, he, uh, <laughs> Charlie's he, son. Is is also our debt collector and uh, contract and nego negotiator. Six uh, for six. He's a monster. <laughs> uh, but um, 
Uh, <laughs> does any of that have any relevance to the design? <laughs> yes, it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. He beats the, somebody over the head with a, with a battery <laughs> if they don't pay. No, if you, if you, if you don't like the design, you, you don't get to say yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anything. But um, no, it's a case we, we tried, uh, we several of us tried different looks of it and uh, Max just went and did that one day and there you go. We all said that's what we wanted. Well, it, 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 it reduced the 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 visual size of it. Uh, to give you an idea, it's um, about one point six three or four meters tall. Um, we have actually a, a back end of it held up against the beer bottle. Yeah. Gives you some idea of what yeah. we're actually yeah, looking at there. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to yeah. move so the picture so we can see that unit yeah, there. So. so. This part here so, yeah. is is so. what we've got here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So let me, I'll just hold that up yeah. so the camera can see. Toblerone so. kind of shape, about 160 and then you've mil. Got three cells. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah, I see. Right. Yep, yep. So yep. It, it's sort of um, in but design itself. At to the some time, uh, I, I'll claim I had some input. Um, at the time, uh, we were shooting for exactly 48 volts, and uh, doing in numbers, uh, multiples of three was the go, and it sort of was pushing us towards a triangular shape. Uh, from a couple of points, but then you know, triangles as strong as hell. There's a video somewhere on our website of a, a truck running over and parking itself on top of the thing. I've seen thing. it. Yeah, yep, yep. that's right. Um, so you can use them as, uh, as speed humps. <laughs> they are very convincing speed, speed, speed humps. Um, yeah. <laughs> Funny you ask. Um, I've been asked in, in, in a garage, do we need to put bollards in front? Because part of the battery safety standards you might need to. Um, I just said, uh, you probably won't need to no. <laughs> um, in saying that consult the battery safety standards but you can run a car over it if you want to yeah uh, <laughs> up to you Here, here's a trivia question for you so i'm a kiwi what do you call judd up uh, i just said it what do you call speed humps in new zealand what no idea judd bars <laughs> Because yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would still remember the first time I, I saw someone be totally confused by this, an Aussie at a caravan park said, I saw a sign saying, mate, it's a judder bars. Where are these creatures? I'm looking everywhere for them. Because <laughs> it sounds like a small marsupial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, drop bears. Yeah. <laughs> drop bears. Uh, we have a human uh, uh, analogy for the, fa for the battery at the factory because uh, they weigh 37 kilos or thereabouts. And one of our electronic engineers, she's just about the same height as that. Uh, and weighs 37 kilos, yeah. so it's, she, she's it's sort of our, our, our standard unit. Yeah. Uh, Is her name Ayan? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, Carly Wong, she's a <laughs> she's very good girl. Yeah, she's a, yeah. Right, yeah. so basically the Carlys, you, how many do you want? <laughs> we should call <laughs> it the Carlys, that's right. And but they're horizontal in this picture, is that the way they have to be installed? No, you can put them sideways for all I care. Yep. So we, yeah. um, uh, I had a customer the other day ask, can I have it with the cable going oh. up top? I said, yeah, but you might get water accumulating in there, but they're IP65 sealed, so it doesn't really matter anyway. So this is the this is the, the rear of it here. And That's so where the wire the goes into. And yeah. so you switch in your wire, and yeah. there's a recess bit. So if you were to put them outdoors... You'd would get an accumulation of water, water, but it doesn't affect yeah, it. A, that be, would become a pool. Yeah, and dirty. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so I, I advised against it, yep. but uh, he... Did it anyway. Right. <laughs> so okay. It's not, a, but it's not an issue that affects the warranty. You drill a little drain hole through the side there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's inside, Into the battery. It's not yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, so, yeah. so that's the only real issue. But it doesn't matter at all. But it's an interesting question you raise because one of the problems that we found on the previous generation of lithium titanate um, flat cell batteries was a little gotcha in the end where we found that uh, they were orientation sensitive. Oh, because it compresses the cells in a certain direction. Um, and the electrolyte uh, doesn't accumulate evenly in certain directions and uh, you can get uh, issues. And so, uh, But there's a lot of unspecified hidden things, but there's uh, no such traps in these ones uh, that we've found so far and we really have looked on these. Right. Yeah. So what have been the design challenges? I mean, you've come up with shape and that was partly organic because of the th multiples of three. <sighs> What what other design challenges? Many things. Um, one point five volts. Uh, well, you, yeah, the, the electronics has to operate down to you know one point five volts, and that's probably the hardest thing because cells are rated at two point three volts, um, and so the it becomes a challenge on the, the BMS circuitry um, working effectively at those low voltages. Um, if you if you search online for um, BMSs. Um, lithium titanate they're quite expensive 
uh, per cell. You know, you're making it north of twenty five dollars per cell on a BMS. Whoa. Yeah. Um, for, for to, to is, operate. Is, is that the BMS or is this a BMS? That's the BMS. Okay. There. This here. Yeah. And that's okay. f- that's free BMSs actually. One per cell. Right. And. Uh, and so we got the cost right down on that, and that was a challenge because the, the, each battery has got 20, 21 BMSs inside of it. So they, they, they pop yep. through like this, and you'll have three. Yeah. Then you have another plate. Yep. Another three. Yep. And so, yeah, yeah. I, I get you. Right. Yeah, and each each of those boards reinforces the structure. It means that um, you can physically carry them without the case uh, when they're being moved around in the factory or when we're not on the conveyors. Um, so it, it's a very, it's an intrinsically strong structure. But that was one of the hard bits, reducing the cost of the BMS. Um, uh, the other hard bits were really compliance to uh, the latest Australian standards. Um, there were a lot of little hidden things in there. And uh, as I was discussing with you, the need for, uh, to be able to, shoot or, st- or stab or remove any one component and the thing still operates in a safe mode. And so that involved a lot of... It was um, IEC 62619. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was a, a very hard thing to to do, uh, but we've done it and uh, we've now achieved those standards. So very pleased on that. So, uh, But apart from that, there's a lot of tooling up costs of this to get it right. And, uh, and then the challenge of manufacture, our first... Uh, um, pilot manufacturing run was actually done in the Philippines for a number of complicated reasons, but it just didn't work out. Um, uh, COVID didn't help at all, um, which caused a lot of um, hell on the uh, transportation and additional costs and things like that. So for one reason or another, we've moved all the manufacturing back to Australia and it's it's all made here. Um Wow, really? Okay, yeah. sorry, I'm just just checking that the cameras are rolling. Um, so mm. all of this, so the circuit well, all, what, all the, made here? All, no, the, the, no, uh, uh, the circuit, the, all the componentry and the assemblies are put together in Australia. Ah. And so the, the, all the final assembly and testing, uh, for example, they're the circuit breakers from South, from South Africa. Uh, the batteries, China, the boards are China. Um, aspects of the metalwork is, is done in Australia, um, but it's sourced all around the world. But the final assembly, uh, in particular, um, the uh, the test and, and, spe- and uh, is done in Australia. And, and, and what we were finding when uh, is that we were getting them made from overseas. Um, if there was a fo- the very first one I opened up had a fault, and I said right open and inspect every one of them, uh, and we did. And I think we only found one other fault and the rest of them, but nonetheless, uh, we decided that that just wasn't a possible scenario for us, um, and we had to get 100% confidence, and so we adopted a process of making them all in the factory and so I can sleep nights. Uh, we have a 20-year warranty on this. It yeah. has to work for has a to long work. time. Yeah. We can't afford to have... Lots of them coming back, not just in the next you know, year or two when they go out, but you know, ten years from now. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of things which are hidden to make certain that these things really are built to last. For instance, do you mean a standard twenty-year warranty? Yeah. Like yeah. It's not like an add-on. No. no. no it's I don't standard. think anyone standard. does that. Standard. Correct. Nobody does. Right. Okay. We do. Wow. One of the reasons we. Uh, one of the things we do, for instance, is conformal coat the boards. Mm. Now, they're already in an IP65 rated case. Mm. But just in case, you know, that, well... It could be a bit of swarf can, inside there or something we don't know about. For instance, they go to uh, the north of Queensland, mm. right? It's Humidity. very hot, very humid. Yeah. Water gets into practically everything. Yeah. Uh, so over just 10 years, off the mic there. if the seals weren't quite so good... Um, sorry about that. Um, the fact is the boards are already coated anyway. So it's the, you can't see it, but it's there uh, protecting, uh, protecting the boards. So we do a lot of stuff that um, uh, checks and um, um, quality control things to make sure that this battery goes out, stays out. Cool. 
And as Charlie said, some people install it with the switches at the top. <laughs> in the rain. In, in the rain. rain. <laughs> On the south side of the lighthouse in Tasmania. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Okay, that's a good challenging environment, certainly on the cold side. Yeah. Speaking of cold, it gets pretty cold here. Um, mm. So is that is that a thing, um, like in terms of temperature performance of these? Do you have a minimum temperature you can charge them at? Uh, Dawson, you probably... Uh, what we say to people is the batteries are like human beings. They like to be treated like a human. Um, so if the temperature is okay for a human being, it's okay for the battery. Um, once it gets to minus five degrees, which Charlie loves, loves. Um, he, he, anything that's above that is too hot for him. Um, but below that, uh, we say for what will happen is you will start to lose uh, some of the capacity of the battery. So if you get down to minus 20 degrees, for instance, you're probably losing 20 to 30% of your capacity uh, in the battery. Once it warms up again, the battery will come back. Um, if you, Interestingly enough, if it goes over 25 degrees, sort of stock standard middle temperature, um, then the battery actually performs slightly better but once you get over 35, 40 degrees, we say for every day that it's the temperature of the batteries and the temperature of that, we take 10 days off the warranty. It, we know that it has some effect on the longevity of the batteries. Now, the battery will continue to work for its 20 years. So we're not worried about that. But it may it potentially not have quite the the eighty percent capacity in twenty years that um, we we uh, we warrant. So and that's only because the temperatures either have been too hot or too cold constantly on the battery. Um, but it's uh, but these things are amazingly tolerant, mm. uh, and they do come back. We've had one one of our clients, in fact, put the battery at minus eighteen degrees. Mm. They then charged the battery. 10, 10 times a day for 500 charges and discharges. At 100 amps. At 100 amps. Yeah. This is the battery test centre. Yeah, uh, no, no, this no, is, um, no, this No, we better not say who no, it was. Oh, okay. Yes. We, I, yeah. I think we... A well-known <laughs> battery testing. Yeah, but, well, a, but a well-known, yeah. a very large, well-known <laughs> company well yeah. uh, who has a, a research facility. Um, they uh, then measured the capacity of the battery and found it had gone down to... Uh, um, 31? Yeah, about 31 kilowatt hours. 31 amp hours. 30, 31 amp hours. Yeah. From 40. Sorry. From 40. From so, 40. So you yeah. lost a, a smidgen under 25%. Yep. yep. That yep. was after about 600 cycles at uh, two and a half C. Yeah, they, they belted it at belted those it. temperatures, which yeah. of course you shouldn't do yeah. for, to any other battery. Mm. Uh, they then heated it up to 50 degrees. Whoa, okay. Right, and did exactly the same tests on, on the cells. Um, and in fact got it back to 41 amps. It recovered. Yeah. It recovered back to really? 41, yeah. not to 40, but to 41. Yes. Wow. Uh, and so then they took it back, uh, did another series of tests on the same battery, doing the same um, um, well over amps, um, really thrashing the battery, uh, and found that it recovered to 39 amps um, at uh, a constant mm. temperature of 30, right. 25 degrees. Yeah. So the batteries will take a pounding. Mm. Uh, we don't recommend it, if, uh, but the fact is they'll do it. Yeah. Um, so if you, you have these in a tough environment, then uh, nothing else that we know of would stand it, not even close. Um, you know, normal lithium batteries uh, really don't go below freezing, as you, you know, and uh, most of our uh, competitors' air conditioners kicking in at something around 30 degrees so, uh, to keep them cool. Right. So, um, Ben, do you, do you have to deal with these kind of issues when you're selling the product, explaining the operating range and the tolerance of abuse, but th there is a consequence on the warranty? Yeah, there is. Um, um, our, our warranty compared to most, however, isn't a just a complete you now lose your warranty because it's gone over 28 degrees or insert appropriate exclusion clauses here that are many and varied. Um, so with ours, there's a there's a very definite uh, yes, it will reduce your cycle life over a long period of time when you're extending the uh, temperature way outside normal realms of most people's houses. Um, 
So that that is always the the biggest selling tool that we have. Um, I'm I'm well aware of all the other warranties about all the other batteries on the market, so it's quite easy to talk about. Um, I've sold just about every battery previous life all in right. in in my sales at previous companies, um, and having to deal with warranty claims with temperatures and that sort of stuff has been an absolute nightmare. Um, probably part of the reason that I got picked up by these guys, knowing the market quite well. So it's, a, it's very refreshing to be able to work with something that is so openly, this is our warranty, we stand by it, it will be for so long, and there is a, a consequence for not installing it the correct way, but it doesn't mean it's completely voided. It just shortens the lifespan a little bit. Mm. And we're not talking about much. Do you get the question, um, so what's the payback period? Mm. What, what, what's your answer on that? Um, my favourite line that I've used is, unfortunately your grandkids might need to change your battery over. It's not going to be you and it's not going to be their kids. It's going to be your grandkids. Um, if you move house, take them with you. Um, it's just the longevity of the battery. But what we've tended to find is ours is probably the only battery that realistically has a payback period with inside the 20-year uh, the, the warranty period. Just about every other battery, as you see on your Solar Quotes website constantly, batteries are not worthwhile putting on your house. You will not get <coughs> a payback. Um, ours definitely will. Um, my recommendation... Uh that I've said to people, and this is outside, Ben, don't know, don't, don't, don't know exactly what you've said, but yep. um, is that um, uh, to under, uh, buy, buy the least amount of batteries that suits your need. Uh, because if you over-scope your system with a tonne of batteries, you're only half-cycling them or, or quarter-cycling them, and as such... Uh, you'll you'll never get any return out of it, and so our, our recommendation is because you can flatten ours to a hundred percent discharge and recharge. My recommendation is to ensure that you buy the, the least amount of batteries that it achieves a full utilisation of that cell a day. And if you're doing that, and you're doing say two cycles a day, night time, day time, you you could pay it off theoretically. I think in five years. Um, on a less optimistic scenario, it could be up to 14 years. So in somewhere my view, in somewhere point. in that area, depending on how you use them. And so I'm the world's worst salesman. I'm telling people to buy less. Right, yeah. You, know? uh, you can cycle them multiple times a day, though. Yeah. Yeah. Look, That's can, where can I be a bit of a cynic fast. here, which is um, the fantastic cycle life would mean that you need to actually own it for that period. Can you take them with you? Like how yes. many people keep a house for 20 years? Not many, they, in truth. But you, no, you, no, keep, you keep making it bigger. You told me it was a building site. <laughs> but, it's but a building that, site but, right there. But, but as you can see, these things are relatively easily <laughs> moved. Yeah. That, that, you know, you, you would you simply take it with you, take the inverter charger with you, have a professional reset it up. That's true. Um, but take it into your next house. You'd be crazy not to, unless you've got somebody coming in who's buying a house who sees the value yeah. and says, hey, you're not taking those with you. No, 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 that's... You know, I'm, I'm paying Glenn would know better than myself, but I, did, I was reading various studies a while ago that showed that if you spent $10,000 on your solar system at your house, uh, the, the net difference on your, your property might be up to $20,000. I think that's probably variable depending on your area and the, the real estate market but um, and, and how crazy your system is. And I think it's changing, which I think there was no value incentive 15 years ago. Yep. Yeah. Um, Real estate agents told me this doesn't add to the value of the home. This sure. because people didn't appreciate the benefit of having yeah, free electricity. But right. now we do. I mean, twenty five percent of the homes yeah. in Australia have free electricity. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to go nuts at my place, as as I was telling Glenn before. Um, I'm, I'm doing a few minor changes to my house. Um, uh, one of which, which is going to eighty eight panels on top on top of the roof, and uh, uh, and the reason is uh, another person on this table who will remain very nameless. Um, has uh, 44 panels on your roof? Oh, you 48. 48. Oh, you've got to, you've got to have oh, I've, I've, I've got to go. I've got to go more. I've got to, I've got to go more. You had to build a bigger house to build more. I'll do it. <laughs> um, but uh, Dawson had to negotiate with his wife over that uh, because the, uh, it, the panels were not to be seen from the street, weren't they? No, absolutely not. No. Not that Dawson's uh, weak in any way or lily-livered. 
married to a five foot woman. <laughs> very scary. Thing. Very scary. <laughs> Uh, it really was a thing I remember in the early days was that they were ugly and we don't want to see yeah. them. And, you know, I've had when I was in the store, I had people say, can you put them on the south side because, you know, the street side was the north side. Yeah. I go, well, they won't work very well. I don't care. <laughs> well, I'm going the other way. Uh, I, I was inspired many years ago, many years ago, flying into Sydney, uh, Mascot Air, Airport actually, and looking down uh, as I'm approaching the I'm seeing all these terracotta roofs and I'm saying to myself, gee, look at all that area for solar cells. You know, what what a waste! And uh, that thought stuck with me. And I, I, I happened to have uh, randomly got a, a very green eco builder who always comes barefoot to my place. Um, and um, and we were talking away one day, and we were talking to Daniel over at um, Total, Total Solar. 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 Solutions. And um, the, the the general concept was: let's make the entire. I'm, I'm, I've got a flat roof. And the flat roofs, uh, you know, like 50 years old, I thought, right, um, instead of replacing that roof, why don't we have the entire roof full of solar cells um, covering the whole damn thing, um, including walkways, which I'm incorporating in there. Um, it's not flat anymore. It looks like it's got a small pitch. Is that it's got a 15-degree pitch on each uh, yeah. array. It has to have that. And uh uh, I'm going to do, do some other tricks in there, including vent, vent, ventilating it. Is, uh, is it sort of east west or north south? Uh, the, um uh, the sun goes at, yeah, at uh, east west, is it's tracking on the, the W shapes of the ah, thing. It's perfect. It's perfect, except for all the shading I've got. So every one of these, every one of these panels is, is going to have an optimizer. I'm going to be looking at his and when, I, when yeah. I'm producing more because I've got no yeah, shade. I know. On the roof, I will be. I got shade him. problems. <laughs> Hey, I'm producing more than yeah. you are. Because <laughs> that's the whole thing that um, uh, it, it's green to have trees, but it doesn't help you on your solar. <laughs> and uh, uh, so uh, I'm having the free phase installed. And, and here's, the, here's the gotcha. Um, you've got to ask, how, how, how many kilowatt hours of energy do I use a day? Oh, it must be like 50, 60. Right. How much would you use, Dawson? 50, 55? I, I would use about that. About that? I use eight. Right. <laughs> so what are you going to do with all that extra? I'm just going to power Melbourne. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to burn energy. <laughs> All right, so you, you're paying it forward. You're giving it to the rest of. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> the, the, the philosophy is I'm getting rid of my gas. Yep. Uh, as I was mentioning before, I'm going to get some uh, electric vehicles, mm -hmm. and uh, that'll offset it all, well and truly. And uh, so I'm going nuts, but it's uh, going to so do maybe a fast charger up on the footpath. So just <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, a, a yeah. pub, pub, public fast charger. Yeah, yeah, well, I shall. But I'll charge. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, um, yeah, it's funny, the real estate were telling me, oh, just do a cheap and cheerful on it, and uh, I don't like cheap and cheerfuls, so I'm going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be an interesting demo point anyway uh, to show. And, uh, Charlie will be at work and I'll be dragging dealers through his house. And you've got to ask, you've got to ask how, many, how many batteries I'm going for. Oh, uh, with, 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 let, uh, let me just be wild here, maybe eight. Five. Five, okay. Because I only use eight kilowatt hours of energy a day. Right, so you don't want just full batteries doing nothing. Yeah. In fact, they don't even like it, do these, these buggers don't give me a discount, really. Yeah. So. Yeah. He's going to say his wife, turn on the lights. Now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like you said, you can cycle them many times a day, but yeah. you can't do that if you've got a massive battery bank. So you actually want to That's size right. it so you yeah. can charge and exactly. discharge it. That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, yeah, that's the philosophy of it. And, uh, um, so far, I've uh, People are starting to see it. They starting to go, oh, gee. So, um, yeah. I've got a suggestion, though, Charlie. Um, so, if you've got so much solar and you've got to, but only <laughs> certain times of the day, yeah. um, and you want to sort of just dump it as uh, energy, but earn something from it. Yeah. <laughs> Bitcoin miners. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. <laughs> they turn electricity and into money. <laughs> I should have just burned. But, um, <laughs> I've, got, I've got a little farm out the back there, so it yeah. runs during the day. So, you know, they, so they, you, you are a miner. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're the old ones, the S9s, and they, they draw 1.4 kilowatts. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment they're probably earning about $8 to $10 a day. Okay, yeah. so yeah. it is an income. Yeah, yeah, but each, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, these are old, old miners. Um, yeah. The new ones just um, uh, you know really tweak the chipsets mm. uh, ten times the earning power for the same amount of mm. energy. So, yeah. my new solar array roof, though, um, it's going to change the aerial view of my house because uh, I, I remember um, I think Daniel 
Daniel Hubert over at um, Total Solar saying, what's that written on your roof? It says, rain, you bastards. <laughs> what, you did? <laughs> no, it wasn't me. It was my wife one day. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, got it's up a flat roof. Yeah, she got up on the roof. Uh, she's a very quiet and reserved woman. <laughs> and uh, uh, it was during the, the drought. Yep. And she just got up there randomly one day with a paint <laughs> finger and then wrote, rain, you bastards, on top of the roof. <laughs> Um, so that's about to be covered. It was a spirit of the moment thing. Let's circle back to the battery because there's one other thing that's not unique but kind of special about it, which is you don't have a comms cable. There's, there's basically just a plus or minus t- terminals. Yeah. Why, why is that? Um, essentially because uh, it, it runs itself. Um, uh, once the inverter's set up for um, your top voltage and your bottom voltage, uh, we... It, it's self monitor, it's self monitoring, uh, and its own alarms. It do, it doesn't need um, to be externally modified or controlled like certain batteries do. You know that as they're as they're getting older, they might be modifying their uh, charge discharge characteristic. Not that I want to cast any doubts on <laughs> what's going on out there, but um, these just uh, don't require it. And, uh, uh, so it's not done. Uh, on our more industrial stuff that we're working on right now, a new Eternity battery, that was a good name. Uh, uh, Dawson thought of that one. Uh, it's called the Eternity. It's going to be written uh, in that nice cursive script, like the famous <laughs> Eternity. <laughs> um, uh, that, that's got you know, comm systems um, on it, and uh, but for that application it's more... Are you allowed that, to talk about that one yet? Yeah, sure, sure. Yep. Yeah, that's a – sorry, I had thought I'd turn this phone off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was wondering. Uh, um, yeah, the eternity will be out in another uh, – few months. Oh, yeah, eight weeks. Same. We'll be out in eight weeks, Charlie. And, and, and <laughs> I get this all the time. And, and, and what market is it aimed at? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's, a, it's a building block. So yep. although it's a battery in its own right, a 48-volt, 33.8-kilowatt uh, battery in oh, it's, its own big. Right. Yeah, it's big. Oh, okay, um, right. Because uh, th- these are what one point nine, one point nine three. Yep. yep. So it's way, way bigger. Okay. Yep. So, so Charlie's not getting one because he doesn't need one. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> no. um, but it's a building block, so you can have anything you like. You can build up the voltages, um, forty eight volts. Uh, so every time you add one, you can put them in series. You can series these and yeah. series these. Right. These so you can do a high voltage batteries. Yeah. And thousand parallel. volts. For you. Yep. And what? And parallel. And parallel, yeah. So parallel for massive storage at 48 volts, higher Correct. voltages to suit s- yep. special inverter systems. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, to megawatt size. Yeah, oh, if, if you want megawatts of storage. I saw on your, on, you've got actually um, a product on here and it shows that's shipping it. containers. Yeah, but they, 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 they to, that's one application where you put 30 of them or so in a shipping container. Yep. Right. Which then becomes a megawatt battery, whatever yeah. the number is. Which is exactly what uh, oh, so all these big batteries it. worldwide, yep. that's what they do. Yep. Uh, thousands of cells. Uh, in so is it still the yin-long cells? Still yes. the yin-long cells. Uh, so each, each one of those, each, that's got 21 slide-in modules, um, and it's a two-man lift on each. I think it's 32 kilos on each slider. Um, and uh, But each one of those slide-in modules has got 16 cells. 16 of, the, of those in there, what, in, in parallel. parallel. Ah, I see. So yeah. the 21 is to hit the, the magic number for 48-volt yeah. combinations? It's 24, and, yeah. Yeah, and then so 16 cells. Oh, sorry, it's 24, yeah. I'm, uh, oops, I'm out of, out of step. Uh, but, so, um, for the very reason we were talking about earlier, yeah. that a lot of the inverters want to be at, at uh, um, 48 volts, correct? Yeah, they want... They uh, don't want 42 at the bottom They don't want 42, end. they want 46, no, they want 48. Yeah. So we put 24 and then all the inverters. Oh, not yeah. 21. So 24 cells in series. Yeah. Correct. So if you add another row of three on yeah. the top. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, and I haven't told Dawson this yet because he gets really upset and angry some days. So I have to come and do podcast. And so we do it on a podcast. <laughs> uh, How's your beer going, by the way? <laughs> he good? needs more. Does it need good. more? Uh, give no. him one more, it'll dampen oh, him down. No, no, I might need one to hit him <laughs> over the head with, but uh, I don't like to talk violence. <laughs> no, I guess you do. Uh, he's a very do, violent man. Do, do you, no, I'm fine. No, I'm fine. Uh, Little Max is designing um, a variant of it right now, which is a two a two column one, which to go in uh, um, your two meter high cubicles. Um, he's nearly finished it. So and for a particular 
project we're working on? It's for um, quite a lot of applications need um, prefer the narrower shape and the height, uh, but also it conforms better to the 24 cell um, divisible by two. It's just a, a better form factor, uh, but he's basically finishing it right now. So that's that's hot off the presses. Yeah, wow. And okay. you, you've, you've just seen how the communication pro- <laughs> processes. You're saying we don't have communication <laughs> in the modules. We don't have communication between ourselves. This is the design process. Oh, right. <laughs> you just, just turn up yeah. at my place and work. Yeah, out. we just blow we'll it out. Read and read the specs. <laughs> it's all been well documented. So yeah. the new thing is like this taller. It's taller. It's, it's so uh, two by twelve. Yeah. Ah, okay. You're you're aware of it, aren't you, Ben? Just. Just now. Uh, uh, <laughs> now. It's worked it out. So I'm guessing how. No, hang on. Hang on. Hang okay. on. You yep. were talking to Max the yep. other day, and, and, and you, were also keeping, yes. you were also keeping it secret from his highness <laughs> over here. <laughs> right. We treat him like a mushroom. Oh, yeah, he's much better treated that way. <laughs> you, you were referring to him as a, as a, as a, a, a pudding before. Now he's yeah, a mushroom. Yeah, now I'm a mushroom. It's a, compl- exactly. it's a combination. <laughs> a combination. Have you ever tried mushroom pudding? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You know what it does no. like? <laughs> yeah, <it's not. laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I agree with you about form factor. So um, tall yeah. and thin it gives you a lot yeah. of flexibility. I mean, you, yeah. generally you have plenty of roof height. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's nice. And small um, ground footprint yeah. is what you want. It just happens to fit in standard, uh, standard cubicles he's got it down to. Yeah. Just off the shelf Standard stuff. container? Uh, yes, it'll fit in standard containers too. Yeah. Yep. And um, in terms of depth, if you put these in a shipping container, what's the aisle width? Uh, fantastic question, which I can't answer off the top of my head. I... Um, uh, was heaps. Okay, uh, how's that? I, I can't remember off yeah. the top of my head. And it was. It's the, somewhere around six to eight hundred. Okay, middle, yeah. if you've got two running down yeah. the sides, I think it's six to eight hundred down the middle. Yeah, right. So I, I think I, I'm putting my little standards hat on now because there is um, on the working side of a battery system, depending on the voltage, you need either six hundred mil or nine hundred mil. Yeah. And if it's over sixty volts, it's nine hundred mils. Yep. Of clearance, it's cool. really based on rescue. So you've yeah. got to be able to rescue someone after an electric shock, which yep. is a good standard. Yeah. Yep. 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 So These, you'd, be, you'd be hard pressed to get an electric shock from them, uh, the way we've designed them. You can't get your hands into them. You can't. You, as soon as you pull the drawer out, it, it, um, was, if there's a way to do it, someone will do oh, it. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I was saying to uh, Tony, in fact, yesterday at the factory, um, uh, that we need to absolutely at the factory employ no rings, no watches, no jewellery, no nothing around when working on uh, batteries. And. Um, my worst industrial accident I ever had actually was in my laboratory many years ago, many years ago. Um, it was a 24-volt truck battery running in inverters we were designing because I had an inverter background too strangely. and I swore to get out of it and never never go there ever again, but somehow I got back into it in a way. But uh, one day I was working on an inverter and uh, I had a metal band watch on and it, it hooked onto the 24-volt uh, uh, lead-acid batteries and next thing you know, the I can see where it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> next thing, next thing you know, uh, it was glowing red. Yeah. And the problem when a watch band glows red is it expands. Yeah. And it doesn't operate normally. So you try and rip the bloody thing off, and you can't. And so it's just burning into you. And uh, the whole laboratory stunk of my burning flesh for hours. And uh, I didn't cry much, but I might have whimpered a bit. <laughs> uh, and so ever since then, look. No rings, no watches. <laughs> I just don't wear them. Yeah, uh, nothing in my nose. Haven't got. A <laughs> get your nose out of it. Yeah, get actually, your it's nose. funny you mentioned that because of the last person I had on the podcast did um, burnt their hand badly in the hospital for three days just by connecting the wrong terminal yeah. on a battery. Yeah, and it was just one of those you know wasn't thinking what he was doing mistakes and even posted so. on, on, on Facebook to show <laughs> yeah. everyone what happens when you short circuit a 200 volt uh, oh, yeah. lithium battery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dangerous thing. Yeah, the heat. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. So far we've had no industrial accidents uh, at all. We've had, right. we've had the odd spark, we had a spark here and there, but that's about it. Oh, we've had a few people who've, who've managed to short things. Yeah, but that's about it. So let's get down to the dirt now. So um, the dirt, yeah, the dirt. I so, like that. So um, can I get a, um, a Victor Victoria rebate on these? That's the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll handle that to our, our king of dirt on the other side of the room. Now you're talking about our favourite organisation. We love CC. them <laughs> with a passion. Great guys. <laughs> I'll keep away from it. Um, 
the answer is we've um, passed all of the tests, we've put all of the documentation in, um, and the CEC, as soon as they uh, uh, give it their, their tick, the answer is that's yes, uh, which we're expecting in the next two weeks. Okay, so you're just in the, in the queue. I'll make yeah. that three weeks, I think. because yeah, All four. Yeah, because... Glenn, you can get on them and help, can't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're, we're, we're there's been a, a <laughs> there's been a change in regulations in South Australia on inverters and they've been overloaded with inverter manufacturer changes. I'm led to believe, and so the approval process, which was two weeks, is now four. four. And, as uh, you can imagine, as an Australian company trying to get our products into the market, we're not overly happy that uh, international companies who have a very small market in South Australia pushing us back in the queue um, uh, when it really doesn't make any difference to them whether they get the South Australian market or not. Um, whereas it makes a huge difference to us whether we can get into the entire Australian market. Not that we're not selling, we are already selling into the Australian market. And I think, I think it's fair to say that everybody who has our batteries is happy with them. Uh, we've certainly had no accidents and nothing to, uh, from a safety nature of... Uh, um, at all, I don't expect it. Um, but it's very irritating that we have to go through this process, which is both expensive and uh, time-consuming, um, and then to be held up because of something which we have absolutely no control of is, is irritating. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I just, oh, we'll, get the, we'll get there. We'll get very through. expensive. Yeah. Um, very expensive. Uh, you know, the fact is the battery is certifi certified now into Europe, um, into most countries in the world, um, because we have the uh, two ISO standards, which is um, 62619 and 62040. Mm. Um, so you know, we're happy we've, we've got those and um, made sure that they are as safe as they can possibly mm. be. Mm. So you got the best practice guide uh, compliance through method one? What did you go... Or method three. I think it's three. three for memory. I think it's three for memory. Okay, I, I, I three. should have it off the top of my head because I've been it's, I've been doing it every day for yeah, a while. Right. But I, I'm 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 administratively challenged. I'm not very good at it. Yeah. Uh, and so I'll forget <laughs> things like that. But yeah. So you know, in a short time, whether it's two weeks or four weeks, uh, these will be listed on the CC list, so people yes. can and access rebates for yep. them. Yeah. Assuming they they. Prove, yeah. you know, I, it's not I expect they wouldn't. Have, wouldn't you know. We've spent so much time getting, yeah. getting absolutely everything right and everything done. But they check everything, including the instruction manuals and warranties and everything, Great. which is good. But right. um, we, we believe we're all done. Yeah, yeah cool. And then Ben will have his work cut out. It'll be just a floodgates will open. Oh, well, we have a number of people lined up to buy them. Um, <laughs> I thought you had my job, yeah. Um, <laughs> more grey hairs. We're good. Well, we do. We have a number of people lined up to buy them. This is yeah. the uh, CEC's approval. I'm, yeah, jealous, I'm jealous of his lack of grey hairs, actually. He, he needs to have a few. <laughs> <laughs> this is what for, uh, about four or five years working with Dawson does it to you, you know. You get as grey as this. Like, this used to be jet black. <laughs> Rubbish, they were white. And they're <laughs> just going dark <laughs> because you have such an easy life. Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, look at that. There it is. Um, so just in terms of uh, using one of your batteries, do you have uh, arrangements with particular inverter manufacturers or is there a, you know, any limitations on what you can do, given that it's nominal 48 or 50 It's basically the volt? voltage range. Yep. Yeah, yeah. A couple don't quite reach the bottom voltage, so of uh, forty-two volts. Mm. So most most want forty-six and above. Mm -hmm. um, so there are a couple that uh, you're probably missing the bottom quarter of the battery storage because of the voltage range. But we're looking into changing it from twenty-one to twenty-two cells, I believe, which will bring it up to a better voltage range for more of the 48 volt. Oh, so this will get longer, just another another three cells. Yeah, another cells. Yeah. Oh, easy. Um, actually, no, 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 no. In fact, Max is... Um, <laughs> uh, hi, Dawson. Uh, Mushroom. <laughs> Ben's aware of this one. Uh, yep. Do you want to break it to him or shall I? I believe it'll shorten from 1.6 to about a metre 1100. He's got it down to a metre. And it's going to be more of a square rectangular oh, so shape design. So shape. no more diagonal. Uh, I was, I was, I was vertical. He was aware of it? Oh, damn. 
So it becomes a little bit more likely in a horizontal format to fit between windows or oh, along a wall okay. a little bit differently or you might be able to get too high on certain walls or fit between the uh, pillars in a in, in the inside of a garage where you've got your brick pillars for the wall. So yeah. it becomes a little easier to transport as well. Yeah, because I remember when uh, Dawson turned up with uh, a couple in the back of his uh, Beamer, yeah, yep. it was j- a bit of a squeeze to get them in, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. <laughs> 1.6 metres. Yeah. I actually like them being horizontal because I can rest my mobile phone on there and a few other things. It's just like a little shelf. It's, yeah. You've got to watch it doesn't fall down the back, though. But yeah. <laughs> Speaking of mounting, um, that bracket system is so minimalist. It's, there's, there's hardly any materials. It's amazing. It's just, yeah, you know, it's good. works very well. Once you measure it up, though, I, I mean, you've got to get the measurement we've right. We've solved that. You have? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, well, there's a, a measuring jig which is created. Ah, no, the actual installation brackets. So yeah, we've got, got we have an wall. eight. It yeah, it's an eight way. Um, an, uh, bra- yeah, an eight yeah. bracket across, so you can mount it on a brick wall much oh. easier, yeah. which has pre-drilled holes, so it's yeah, perfectly it's all spaced. perfectly spaced. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the two of us were wrangling a little bit to get you know, one end in and yeah. the other end in. And, but, you know, once we got the measurement right, it worked. But yeah, The, the clipping's really nice. It's yeah. just uh, yeah. it, and it's a two-person it's, job. It floats. It's, you know, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not pissing in your pocket here. It's a beautiful-looking battery. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> I mean, I think that's probably one of its selling points. When you it think, is. Ben, is that it doesn't look like a battery. Correct. It's an aesthetic item. Well, uh, I'll, I'll switch into flog it mode now. Okay. I, just, I just have to because um, Ben's not working hard enough here. Um, uh, one of the philosophies in the battery was modularity, and that, um, as you know, I recommend to customers to start small yep. and build up. Well, because they they come in bite sized chunks, you can start with a I don't know free batteries, and if that does the that does the trick, stay with it. But if you need an extra one, you just add, add the extra one. It's, it's not an issue to scale up. Um, no, so. if you're going to add electric vehicles later and yeah, you go more nothing. storage, not a problem. So That's you right. can keep paralleling. Mm. Yeah, keep because a lot of the managed batteries have very restrict controls on the number you can parallel. Sometimes it's only two, you mm. know, and that's it. Right. The only concern in paralleling lots and lots and lots is when is the initial turn on. That uh, let's say you've got a, a battery bank with. 10 there in parallel which might be fully charged and then you add a battery which has been sitting dormant for a year to that and that's flat suddenly you get a circulating current of a crazy amount going to the flat battery and the circuit breaker will trip Um, and so the trick is to catch the two when they're at a similar voltage and then 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 join the link so that's the, the practical offshoot of that. I've got another strategy. I, I built a containerized system with 80 parallel batteries. Wow, 80. And 80, yeah, and exactly that happened. As soon as yeah. I turned them on, they were tripping all over the place. Yeah. So it was basically turn turn one on, yes. then turn one more on. Yep, I've uh, done and, this. And with a voltmeter. And yeah. you go, yeah, we've, yep. got, we've got that number there, and then turn yep. one more on. I've done exactly that. And if it starts to trip, then turn off the first few and start again yeah, yeah. until you get them all, yeah. That, that's it's been, it takes a while. You've got to be a bit tactical about it. Yeah. And, uh, At least uh, nothing bad happens. Just no. The breakers no, keep the breakers tripping. kick in and it saves you. Yeah. yeah. That's the only restriction we've really found mm. on it. Um, Charlie would call that testing. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> right, We're just yeah. testing the breakers to make sure they work. Yeah. Oh, I've tested them. Uh, uh, I'm the one who did the short circuit tests too, and it's all good. Short circuit currents, 1,700 amps. Oh, you remembered it. So I that do. actually is another tech question. That's of the. That's, uh, it's actually del- uh, uh, of the actual unit itself. It's 1,700, and uh, you may wonder why we picked the wire size. Is it? It's the only thing that limits the current. It's a serious resistance of the cable. It's a serious resistance, and so yep. one. And, and we've been caught out on this recently by a customer. Um, you know, this is my confessional time. It's a my. My Catholic uh, background. <laughs> you'll you'll sentence me to five Hail Marys at the end of this, uh, but um, one customer just recently was having a problem with um, I forgot the exact nature of the the end thing where we examined it, but um, they had the cable lengths all at the two meter or whatever it was applying with, and and one they cut to a short length. Ah. And so that was causing an imbalance in the system. So our recommendation strongly is 
well, number one, don't cut the wire because that that forms part of the our current limit. So preferably just coil it up, put a little coil in there, and please keep them to the same length if you're running um, multiples. It's just good practice. Uh, it's pretty much advice from many battery manufacturers. It's, yeah. It's because you've got the same reference voltage then across all the batteries. That's right. Under load. I think yeah. we've added that to the instruction manual, haven't we? Yeah. I've got so another tech question for yep. you. Um, in terms of, because I have to teach the, the battery standard, one of the requirements is to do the arc flash incident energy calculation and mm-hmm. arc flash boundary, and, and you need this number called the bolted fault current. That's right. What do you what do you list yours as? I can't remember. Okay. I was looking at it about a it, month ago. It's in the data sheet somewhere? It is. Um, I'm not sure I've got it in there. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, did, I did do the number and I can't remember. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I'm a busy boy. <laughs> is that required in the data sheet? Uh, it's required to calculate it. So, um, I, I, you know, some of the yes, big I, name brands don't even have it, and I've had to ring up their engineering department to find it out. So it's not unusual not to find it. Tell you what, next Monday or Tuesday I'll dig it up and okay. I'll, 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 I'll send it across to you. We'll add it to the description on this. Uh, well, on if it's the, not in the data post, sheet, we should post it. I'll put it in my yeah, because um, it is one of those, when you, you know, go to do the calculation, this is what's the bottle of current, everyone looks at the data sheet and generally it's not there. So I think it's a learning exercise yeah, that yeah. Australia only has this requirement to do the arc flash incident energy calculation. And yeah. You need to know that instantaneous before the breaker yeah, trips. Yeah. It's not the breaker rating. It's usually way more than the breaker rating. Sure. Cool. Well, that's my sermon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, um, I'm, no. getting, I'm getting a bit dry in the mouth, and I think, I think it's probably time to wind this, uh, this podcast up. But uh, it's been great having you here. And look, as always, I've learnt lots about this product, which I've had in the lab since you started, really. Um, and it's part of the microgrid system here. It contributes to all the homes, so you're actually helping yeah. supply energy to seven homes here uh, at the cluster level, so that, oh. that's, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool. Well, good to do that. All good. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Glenn. And vehicles. And charge vehicles, yep. Yeah, yeah no, thanks, Glenn. Thanks, thanks Glenn. It's been a ple- pleasure it. being here. Thank good you. one. Okay. Yeah. I'll pull the plug. I'll have, have one more beer. Let's have one more beer. <laughs> <For> <laughs> <right>. <laughs>